Hi, my name is Ken Bailey, and I am a lifelong hobby cartoonist. I have been drawing cartoons of various types since, uh, probably going back since my grandmother gave me a chalkboard back in my very early childhood. I'm now in my mid-fifties, and have almost a half century of cartooning under my belt. I've been in a few magazines, but 99% of it has been just for the love of the craft, for the hobby. I'd like to show you a little bit of my work and how it's done. Okay, this is my main flagship character at the time. This is the Mighty Energy Girl. I publish my own comic books. This is an example of a recent issue. They're done in full color, but the old-fashioned way with pencil and paper. And then they're bound with a binding machine after being duplicated in full living color. And then they are scanned into a computer and put on the web where that is where my uh, audience is. We have a black and white drawing here that is still in the very early stages of uh, being done. Here we have a few more examples of some things I'm working on now. Here we have a picture of Holly Pena. She is a, a psychiatrist to the superhero community. And here we have a good black and white sketch of Energy Girl. As you can see, she is rather well endowed, quite muscular, uh, born with a very advanced DNA that, uh, while she's fully human, gave her a greatly enhanced body structure. And um, this is a very early sketch, still in the very early stages. Here's one that's been cleaned up a little bit. That is Energy Girl's main adversary, uh, head of the WSLZ News Department, Jenny Jeffers, arguing with good old E.G. because she caught her doing the dishes, something that no super-powered woman should ever stoop to doing for herself. Oh boy, we've got what I'd like to do now, in just a second, is to show you I've had some requests on what is it like to start from basically a blank piece of paper. So we're just going to take a moment here. I'm not the world's best photographer, but uh, we're going to start with this blank sheet of paper. And if I can keep my own shadow out of it, what I usually do for starters is I do just the basic rough shapes with pencil. We'll get E.G.'s basic hairstyle and head shape in here, her bust in the right place, clavicles, and so forth. I don't like to spend a whole lot of time on the pencil stage, so we'll jump with just these rough shapes and head right for the what I call the light inking. I use a, a pen by a major manufacturer. This is their ultra tiny small light <laughs> size. Their fine point actually is what I use for the heavy inking, which comes later. I have a very active fan club. You can see one of them here who, since I'm drawing, has showed up to rummage among my papers and generally get in my way. But uh, all adds to the challenge of the job. So we'll get old Energy Girl's eyes in here. Energy Girl, whose real name is uh, Ellen Ann Peabody, was born Ellen Ann Hubrowski in the, uh, in the mid-1950s, which makes her in her mid-50s now. She's one of the very few superheroes you see who is actually a middle-ager. As I said earlier, it was an advanced DNA. She is kind of a mutant, but she's a one-of-a-kind, non-reproducible mutant. She is not an indication that humanity is about to take a great stride forward. She is just one of those very rare cases where someone turned out a little different than the rest of us. But uh, due to her advanced structure, every cell in her body processes pretty much every human function much better and more efficiently than the rest of us, right down to the oxygenation of her blood, both the tensile and kinetic strength of her muscles. It was discovered early on that uh, Ellen was a very unusual kid, so her parents very wisely hid that from uh, the rest of the community and quietly enrolled her when she was of junior high school age in hero training at the uh, nearest hero training facility, the U.S. government facility at uh, 
at Chicago. I neglected to say that Ellen's hometown is a little little hometown in one of the Midwestern states known as Fairview. So while El Ellen was for all the world a normal junior high school and high school student, she was secretly attending seven years of intense training to be a government certified approved superhero to learn to master her powers and also intense studies on ethics, superhero history, and all kinds of other things so that she could be safely entrusted with what was turning out to be massive super strength, uh, massive endurance. She, uh, she can't lift a planet like certain other super strong people you're familiar with, but she is able to run at 60 miles an hour. She can jump up to 20 feet at a time. She can lift almost 250 tons on a good day, which is the weight of a, a good-sized diesel railroad locomotive. Now, EG stories are generally rated PG at their uh, most dramatic, but uh, it's generally practiced that drawing the human body is a little like hanging a door. Before you put the clothes on, you have to kind of draw the almost nude body underneath just so you know where things are, so you get all the wrinkles in the right places, and so forth. Um, obviously, Ellen has rather generous female curves, but she also has a very well-developed musculature, so we accentuate both. She's a woman of many contrasts, um, except for her build. She's a lot like the superheroes of the 1950s. That is, pretty much good through and through, pure-hearted, etc., 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 does not take human life, but she can be an unleashed tornado if you're a bad guy and you get on her wrong side, such as being caught in the act of robbing a jewelry store or something like that. It will not go well for you. Okay, now the last thing is Ellen has a very large letter E. She always has, this is about her fourth or fifth uniform design in her 30 years of hero work since being certified at age 18 but uh, she has always had a letter E over her left bust, which, since we are looking at her, is our right. So we'll put that in last, like this. And then we are ready for the next stage, which is the heavy inking stage. Now, I am a great fan. I better put the cap on before my pen goes dry because I am one of the many typical starving artists. I am not a millionaire, so I have to conserve my pens. I use now the more thick pen that I said the manufacturer calls their fine point, but it is actually a, a much bigger point than the other one. We don't go over all the lines, but we generally go over the outlines to give it a nice bold look. And also, uh, dark areas tend to draw the eye, so this will really make the drawing kind of pop out at you. We hope, anyway. Obviously, going straight to ink without sketching everything in pencil does leave room for error that can't be corrected. But one of the challenges is if you do make a mistake of then trying to work it into your drawing so that unless you spill the beans, nobody even knows there was a mistake made. Ellen does have this one little curl on the uh, right side of her head that just kind of stands alone from the rest of her hair. It's kind of her trademark, so we'll put that in. And the rest of her hair up here kind of curves back onto her head like this, and then on down her back like this. You know, this is just a single drawing, but part of the fun of doing whole comic books is you're as much a storyteller as you are an artist. And creative writing is just as much fun as cartooning. I tell some people it's like playing that famous computer game where you create your own city or your own world, except it's a lot cheaper because all you have to buy is pens. You don't have to buy a computer program. And if they're your characters, nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong because you're the one who makes up the rules. It's like being god of your own universe, really. Though I do try to keep the laws of physics and nature and other things like that as much as possible, saying if there really were super endowed human beings, super powered heroes, uh, what would they be like and what, what constraints would they be under given functioning in the real world? There's still plenty of room, of course, for whimsy and uh, 
having fun, but it's it's nice to be keep it real. That's why pretty much with this hero, anything a human being can do, she can do ever the much more so. If you can lift 100 pounds, she can lift 250 tons, but you won't catch her flying or shooting laser beams out of her eyes because we can't do that, and being human, therefore, neither can she. She's just kind of a supercharged human being. Okay. Furthermore, um, we like to ask ourselves other things. Notice she's got a pretty hefty set of bicep muscles on her, um, such as, let's just say that, what would it be like to have super strength and to be a certified protector? Well, for one thing, you all know what spider, that guy, spider guy, see, I have to be careful of copyrights, you all know what he said. But uh, it's true that the more power you have, the more you are held accountable for how you use it. So people, knowing that, can take advantage of you. They can diss you and insult you and throw things at you and all kinds of stuff like that. And there's absolutely nothing you can do back. You can't throw a car or a truck back at them, hurt them, because you're, you are constrained to always do the right thing. So you build up a lot of anger and resentment and frustration. What would a hero do to get rid of that? Answer, she goes home. And in the privacy of her secret civilian home, she has a very advanced gym in her subterranean basement where there are tremendous barbell weights that are not only huge, but furthermore are um, augmented by super electric magnets under the floor. So she just lifts and lifts and lifts and lifts and works all that tension out of herself. Now, unfortunately, one of the bad side effects of that is it does give her a rather hefty set of muscles, which, because they also oxygenate better than ours do, tend to bulk up quite a lot when she does that. So she looks a little like uh, that Austrian guy, whose name I can't say because of copyright, for a while, until she's at rest for a while, and then they go back down again. Okay, we're now ready for some color, but uh, all important... You budding artists out there, don't forget to add your copyright symbol and your name and the place of origin. No, I don't live in Fairview. I wish I did. I, I think a certain famous comic book creator whose name I can't mention, again because of the ever-popular copyright, got to interact with his own created characters in the movies, and I would love to do that, but I'm too poor to make a movie. I can't even live in my character's hometown. That's a reality. Okay, now, here we have... Oh, I better turn this over. These guys haven't paid me for product placement, but we have the colors. And because, unfortunately, those of you who believe in God must believe he has a sense of humor because I am quite colorblind, so this manufacturer is nice enough that they have written the names of the colors on their marking pens. So I always have to check to make sure I get the right ones. And now we will quickly add a little color. I have about a minute to go, so we're obviously not going to get done. But the main part of Ellen's uniform is yellow. So we'll add that real quick. And as her muscles grew ever larger, Ellen was very concerned about still appearing appropriately female, so she got the federal government to design her some earrings that are held to her ears by a super powerful magnetic thread that you can't see. So even in the midst of battle, her earrings very seldom come off. She thinks that gives her a more feminine look while she's got those enormous biceps all over the place. Okay, now we need some red for the uh, collar of her uniform, and we're, gosh, we're down to less than a minute, so I'm afraid you're not going to see the finished work until the next film, because I have less than 30 seconds to go here. I might add that being in her 50s, Ellen's hair is a lustrous gray, though her body, again being supercharged, is much younger than the rest of our bodies will be at 50, but... Uh, Okay, now we have all of 10 seconds left, so there we have 
our finished work, except for her hair and a wash in the background. I'm Ken Bailey. Good day.